eventually that relationship ended and I think I had relied on music so much and writing and like had just it really had carried me through a really hard period of my life and I'd really leaned on it a lot and then I started dating my husband my now husband but then I just I don't know it just kind of fizzled out and I was just I think I just needed a break from it it had been such a like big part of a part of my life that was not great I just needed a break so I stopped playing guitar pretty much almost all together and really stopped singing even eventually for probably like five years it was a really long time and then a couple years ago something just lit a fire I don't know I don't even know what it was but I just woke up one day and I told my husband I I need to go for it I need to really do this I need to do whatever it takes and I need to try and see where it takes me and Today we are joined by Bonner Ray Roden. Do people know you by like Bonner Ray or do they call you bon- Bonner or like your whole name or what, how do people, I was trying to look up you, look, oh, look you up. And... I know. Most people just call me Bonner. Okay. But I, I guess there's a couple people in life that call me Bonner Ray. Yeah. Especially if they don't know. <laughs> yeah. Bonner Ray kind of has a cool like little ring to it in my yeah. opinion. But let's start with just starting with where I, I stumbled upon you because I was just You know, I'm on Instagram a lot and I just type in songwriter Houston and just kind of scroll through and find people that are posting songs. And I I saw you play a song and I think it was even something that you said you had wrote um, because a lot of people do covers and and that's fine. But like you wrote something. I was like, man, your voice is really cool. Like, And so that got me down the rabbit trail of tracking you down and saying, hey, you want to come by and talk about music, talk about songwriting. So really appreciate you being here today. Awesome. I'm excited. Before we started recording, you were actually sharing a little bit about kind of how you grew up and and the beginning of your musical journey. Because uh, one of the things that we talk about is the fact that like being a musician is one thing, being a songwriter is another thing. Mm-hmm. So kind of take, take us through your journey a little bit and kind of how you grew up and, and what brought you to, you know, you just released two songs last year, 2019. Congratulations on that. Like, it seems the beginning of something really cool for you. Yeah. Um, So go through that a little bit. (laughs) I was born in Alvin, Texas. Um, So grew up there and um, I grew up just listening to, you know, all the great country artists and Shania Twain and all that and always loved music. I grew up singing in my church. I sang from the time I was little bitty in elementary at the Christmas programs would sing solos and um, grew up in to junior high and sing in the church band and still on my church worship team to this day. Cool. Um, so that was kind of a big part of, I think like getting me going mm-hmm. in that. Did you have a natural talent or do you feel like you'd had to work at it? <laughs> I think I just always thought that I had a good singing voice. <laughs> Everybody does. I do. I don't, but I do <laughs> Sounds too. Sounds so vain, but it, it never, and there's so many people out there who have great singing voices, but they think they're terrible and they won't sing in front of people. But mm. I never had that issue. And I just always kind of assumed that I was really awesome. <laughs> which is hey. so ridiculous. But um, yeah, so I, I took voice lessons in high school, looking back on it, and I've, I've taken voice lessons more recently just to kind of improve and strengthen my voice a little yeah. more. And looking back on my voice lessons in high school, I'm like, I don't really know how much good that was doing. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. But I did. I did that for whatever that was worth. Were you learning an instrument at that time or so, just singing? I know I we talked about this earlier a little yeah. bit, but my mom made us all take six years of piano. It was a requirement in our household. I have three other siblings, and like she said, six years. That six was years. Her, that was the requirement. Not five or seven. Not so five. Not six. six years. It was you had to do six years. Hmm. I think really it just was like that was how long me and my brother lasted before we pitched a big enough fit to where yeah. she let us stop, and yeah. so that's what she required of my sisters as well, who are younger. So. I'm I'm not really sure if that's how the number came to be, but that's six fine. years. So um, I did that. I hated it at the time. She always told me, "You'll be so glad that I made you do this one day mm. if you ever want to learn another instrument." Is that true? My kids are in piano right now. Do you believe you know that? What? Or no? I eventually, when I started teaching myself to play the guitar, I finally, literally went to my mom one day and said, "Please don't gloat in this." But thank you for making me wow. take piano. It Shout has. out to mom right there. <laughs> So I'm sure that was a high point in her life. Um, 
but yeah, so I did that. And then, um, I kind of tried to play guitar a few times and it just, I never really stuck with it. And then, um, Taylor Swift came out with her first album and that was my big inspiration. I thought she was so cool and loved that she played guitar and she just looked so fabulous up there. And I was like, I'm going to learn to play the guitar. I'm going to do it. So it was over a Christmas break. Um, I was in high school. I think I was maybe a sophomore in high school, probably. Mm. Um, over Christmas break, I just sat down. We Were had... you trying to learn Taylor Swift songs? Oh, yes. Yeah, I My first sure. song that I learned, that's what I did all Christmas break. I had a baby Taylor that I don't know why we had it, but we had a baby Taylor. Wow, that's a good guitar. Yeah, I know it was great. Yeah. Small, which mm-hmm. was probably good, mm-hmm. honestly, mm-hmm. starting to try to learn. But um started on a baby Taylor and all Christmas break I played Tim McGraw by Taylor Swift that like first big hit of hers um I just played it over and over and over and over until my fingers were just raw Mm -hmm. um and yeah eventually uh started throwing in some Sugarland songs were people supporting (laughs) you along the way like man that sounds cool or like were they like you need to work on that (laughs) no people were really supportive I at first of course was just around my family but um I remember a couple of my friends knew that I played that I was playing guitar and singing and my brother as well and brother and I were close in age so we went to school together and I was in beta club which was this honor society at my school and we went to convention every year and um they did a talent portion and my school had always done, there was group and there was like solo talent Mm -hmm. and they were two different competitions and we'd always done group, but it wasn't very good. And they were really hoping to revamp it. And our teacher who was in charge of beta, um, asked in a meeting if anyone would be interested in doing the solo talent. And I did not raise my hand. Yeah. (laughs) And then all of my friends and my brother ratted me out and said, Bonner plays guitar and sings. We should make her do it. She should do it. She should do it. And I was like, Oh my gosh, no, I hadn't, I had never, yeah. Played guitar and sing in front of people. I'd sing in front of people lots of times, but never played guitar and sing. And, um, so I was, really kind of like, whoa, okay, everybody calm down. Um, but I ended up doing it and that was the first time that I ever played guitar. Did you feel like this is cool? Like when you throw you nervous as loved it. Oh, really? I loved it. I did, um, concrete angel by my Martina McBride. Okay. Um, and it was just the coolest experience. I, I, got up there and did it. I was so nervous, got up there and did it. And then after the first verse and chorus, everyone just started cheering. Wow. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Like, and it really <laughs> amped me up. I think I ended up speeding the song up cause I was just yeah. so amped up. And, um, afterwards I, I got a standing ovation and that was like a couple thousand people. And wow. I, I was just yeah, on it. <laughs> <And> first performance. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, I think it's on YouTube. Oh, actually. really? I'm pretty People sure. Should look that so up. that's awesome. Your fans should definitely um, look that up. That's crazy. So, how old were you at that point? I think that's that high school. Was you know, I think that was actually my sophomore year. Okay. So maybe I picked up guitar my freshman year, or maybe I just really went. So for there's it a and- big gap between <laughs> you performing live. 2019 releasing two songs like yeah. what's the journey been for you to eventually get to where you are now i'm not trying to be rude and say why it takes so long <laughs> no, but no, like no. explain that a little bit in high school i i did some you know i sang at the beta convention every year i did the talent portion um which was really fun for me and kind of my big thing Um, and I continued to sing in church. Um, I was the junior high worship leader for the church that I was attending in high school. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did that every week. Um, and then I, I would do little, I got asked to play at this little artist pop-up thing and in a park one time. And I played at some talent shows and county fairs, but I don't know. Honestly, I, my dad kind of really pushed me at the time and was like, you really should go for this. You really should go for mm. this. But I think I just didn't really know how or what to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you're a high schooler, you, were I mean, you writing songs too, or just doing a lot of covers and stuff? So or? I wrote my first song. 
I believe my junior year of high school after the boy I was dating at the time cheated on me. Oh, man. (laughs) And I went home. I really wasn't that upset about it. I don't know. I was never very attached to my boyfriends. But um, I went home and I was mad. And I just thought to myself, you know, I bet I could write a song about this. Yeah, an angry, I bet sassy I could do song. It. Yeah, yeah, I bet I could do it. And um, I just had this mental idea of trail of dust and just leaving a trail of dust and getting out of here. That's the trail of dust back. song? Trail of dust. That was the first song oh I ever gosh. wrote. <laughs> wow, this is unpacking. This is getting more and more interesting. <laughs> yeah, so that was okay. the first song I ever wrote, which and it was ended up being my first release yeah. in 2019. I'm just, I'm nostalgic and sentimental like that. And I mean, how many people, the very first song they ever write is oh, yeah, good yeah, enough yeah. to yeah. release yeah. 10, 11 years later, however yeah. long. No, I thought it was great. Yeah. yeah. I'm, and it's, I, I don't know. I'm just, maybe I'm just sentimentally attached to it, but I, I think it's a good song and um, I think I'll always be kind of attached to it because mm-hmm. it was, it was my first one. And, yeah. um, so after that, that kind of got my ball, my ball rolling as far as songwriting. But, and then I, I went off to college and, um, seems like everything always <laughs> revolves around dating a guy. <laughs> Well, my first song. Well, now you're married, so you can you you can write all these songs about your husband, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, not all of them, not the bad ones. They can't be sad. (laughs) Now now they're gonna be lovey songs and not like angry sassy songs. Um, I've got something to say on that too, which we'll (laughs) probably talk about later. Um, But I, yeah. So I was dating a guy, and it it really wasn't a great relationship, and so which in turn gave me a lot of good. uh, just gave me a lot of good stuff to go off of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of good input for songs, mm-hmm. um, which was good, I guess. At least that came out. Of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started writing a lot my freshman year. I wrote so much, and then eventually that relationship ended. And um, I, I just, I think I had relied on music so much, and writing, and like had just, it really had carried me through a really hard period of my life, and. Um, I'd really leaned on it a lot. And then I started dating my husband, my now husband. We started dating my sophomore year of college and his freshman year of college. (laughs) So I started dating him and I kind of kept up with it for a while. And but then I just I don't know, it just kind of fizzled out. And I was Mm. just I think I just needed a break from it. I just needed to take a step back from it. And it had been such a like big part of a part of my life that was not great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think I just needed a break. So I stopped playing guitar pretty much almost all together and really stopped singing even eventually for probably like five years. Wow. I mean, it was, it was a long long time. time. It was a really long time. And then a couple years ago, I finally, I wanted to start playing guitar again and I picked it back up. And of course, you know, you don't, after quitting that long, you don't just jump back in and you're mm. not, <laughs> you don't start where you were when you quit. So yeah. that was frustrating for me. And um, I got a little frustrated and kind of took a, another couple months and stepped back and stopped for a while. And then something just lit a fire. I don't know. I don't even know what it was, but I just woke up one day and I told my husband, I, I need to go for it. I need to really do this. I need to do whatever it takes and I need to try and see where it takes me. And you're like, I have this good song. It's the first (laughs) song I ever wrote. I need to put it out. And you know, when you quit writing that long, cause writing, sure. I, I do think it takes some natural talent, but also I think a lot of it is practice as well. Mm-hmm. And when you quit writing that long, you're not going to, it's not going to flow as easily yeah. as it, mm-hmm. as it had in the past. And so that was frustrating too. I just had to work through a lot of just annoying, frustrating little things. And, um, but I was, I was really committed that time. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. finally was like, no, I'm, I'm really going for this. I'm going to mm-hmm. do it. And I actually, um, I need something big to, like keep me going. Like I have to have something specific that I'm working towards. And that's what drives me as far as, at least with music. Mm-hmm. Um, so I needed to, I knew I needed to get my voice strengthened again. 
Um, so I decided the voice was doing auditions. Oh, cool. <laughs> so I signed up um, to go to San Francisco wow. and audition for the voice. So it was like I had paid for a hotel and a plane ticket. And so I needed to be as prepared as possible. So it really was something, it made me work really hard on getting my voice strengthened again. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, getting and practicing guitar more and stuff, just in case I made it to the next round sure. or, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and I didn't, it what didn't was that go experience anywhere. Like? It was really, it was fun. I, I mean, it must've felt good to actually take this, take that step of like, I, it felt I really this. good. I wasn't upset. I mean, it's a TV show. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Of course you have to be talented to get on it, right. but there's hundreds and hundreds of extremely talented people that try out for that show exactly. that don't make it. Oh, yeah, like yeah. it has oh, yeah, yeah. not making it had no bearing on. Are you good or not? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it just didn't. Yeah. I honestly left there. I was just so excited. I was excited that I did it. I was excited that I powered through. It made me so nervous to yeah. try out like that. And, but I, there's I, tryouts before even the show part of it, right? Oh like, yeah. It's there's, all kind of trials. There's, yeah. well, there's so many hoops you have to jump through to get yeah. to the show portion of it. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was a really, really good experience. And I think a good opened the door for me. It, it made me nervous and I powered through it. And so I came back and, uh, shortly after that, probably like a month after my tryout, I played my first, um, little gig. I played at a private tent at the Houston rodeo did that show and I asked one of my guy friends who I've known for a long time Marcus if you ever look at my Instagram or anything the guitar see. player yeah yeah okay, he cool, plays cool, guitar cool. with me a lot yeah. and um actually he played acoustic on my two singles and he um sang backup vocals yeah on he had a cool voice together too. yeah yeah he's, on one of those videos he yeah was singing too. yeah he's great um I love him and he like is just super, super helpful to me. Shout out to Marcus. Yeah. Um, so I asked him if he would want to play with me and he was like, yeah, sure. That sounds great. So we did. And then now we just kind of open this door and he plays with me when he can. If he can't, it's fine. Yeah. I can play for myself, but I really, yeah. singing is definitely my focus. When you play live, are you playing a lot of your songs or is it kind of a combination of some covers and I definitely do things? a combination Definitely a combination. Um, a, because, I mean, I'm a really small artist, so people don't usually know my songs. Right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you want to keep people interested, and you keep people interested by mm -hmm. p playing Landslide by Fleetwood Mac or, you know, totally. Jolene by Dolly Parton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Songs like that that everyone knows, and that's that's what they want to video and put on their Instagram story mm -hmm. and tag you in. It's not mm -hmm. going to be your stuff unfortunately but eventually yeah one day we'll people will be there. like hey can you play that bonner ray song <laughs> yeah when we come back i want to talk about the songwriting process a little bit with you and pick your brain about that but let's take a short break for our sponsor sponsorship if you are a songwriter a musician a rapper in the houston area if you need a place to record someone to work with you on your music make your songs the best that they can be then Feel free to reach out to me, 150music.com. Um, fill out the free re free quote request. And if you put in the discount code snack time, then I'll give you 15% off our first project together. So let's do it. Now back to the show. Let's talk for a second about the songwriting process because you mentioned earlier like there was a season where you were writing a lot of songs and then you kind of went through a, a long season where you didn't and you kind of had to work it up. One of the things I like to ask people is like, is songwriting for you, is it a discipline practice or is it like, when inspiration hits and this thing is happening in my life and boom, a song comes out or how does it work for you? This is actually a question I've become pretty passionate about. <laughs> okay. Explain why. <laughs> or I guess my answer to it, I'm like passionate about. Okay. I, I think that yes, a lot of people just have a natural talent for writing and I think I have some good natural talent for it, but a lot of it is is working at it. I mean, it, it mm -hmm. takes to train your, it's so, you have to train your brain to think like a songwriter, which is a unique process. And I actually do even just writing exercises. I try to do them wow. daily. I pick just a word. Just take a prompt or I pick a go. word. I make my husband pick it for me. Just any random word. I think yesterday... He texted me bubbles. Oh, <laughs> Bubbles was the word. The other day I wrote just 
the word line. I just took the word line and like whatever comes to mind. So like when I wrote about line and I, you write for 10 minutes, you set a timer on your phone for 10 minutes and you write for 10 minutes. And when that timer goes off, I don't care if you're on a roll. So you're not thinking what. about melody. You're just you like, stop. it's a oh, writing just thing. Just writing, yeah. just writing, just training your mind. Like to I think. crossed the line or like there's yeah, the bound, just, it's whatever yeah, it inspires. So line, I took like, mm. I kind of took that towards boundaries, like setting boundaries in your life and wrote about that and just kind of whatever came to mind. And mm-hmm. I mean, some days I write just in like kind of bullet points, literally just whatever comes to mind. Or some days I write a paragraph, kind of like a short story mm-hmm. or something like that. And I write and I do that. And then I usually kind of, I like to, you make like, (laughs) it's hard to explain. I'll write like five nouns and then I fold a sheet of paper over so I can't see those nouns anymore. And the next day I'll write five adjectives and the adjectives pair with the nouns. Uh, And sometimes you get just some interesting things that you never would have thought of before Mm -hmm. or kind of make you think of something else mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. yeah so <laughs> that's really neat because you're making connections that you you're forcing yourself make. to like think differently which is going to lead to like that creative way that and then yes. everybody's gonna say i wish i would have thought of that so there's this concept of like i don't know take apple or take any big company or anything like that where like that must have been the most like that guy must be a genius well yes they're really talented people but it it, it usually there's usually it usually came from somewhere. Mm-hmm. They are just the ones that kind of were were able to put it into yeah. into existence. You know yeah. the proper way. Like Uber wasn't the first people to you know do ride sharing, right? Mm-hmm. But they were the first to like really make it pop. But so it's like there will be these songs where it's like, man, that's a really cool concept for a song. Wish I would have thought of that. But they put in so much work and time into crafting their yeah. way of thinking. Like you're talking about songwriting is like a it's a way of thinking and uh, there's a recent show put on by the people that make the voice I'm blanking on the name do you it's know what I'm talking about Songland Songland yes okay. I've been enjoying this this show called Songland and it's amazing how they like are like talking through how to take your song which they all sound super cool but how can you make it better like how can you tell a story that's deeper that's richer that's more full it's, it's amazing to me that like you have to put in the work. In order to come up with something like good, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. do you have uh, alternatively? Do you ever like have bad ideas where you think this is not very good? I so I try to write. So songwriting isn't my full time job. Yeah. So you know, can't write all day every day, but yeah. or even every day, unfortunately. But except for my writing exercises, those that's a daily thing. Day. Oh wow! I try to do that every day. That's cool. Um, it's important. It's the first thing in the morning. Um, but I usually try to write at least three times a week, like give my to- myself time to sit down and with my guitar or with my keyboard and just work on writing things or coming mm-hmm. up with new chord progressions that I like. Um, so I try to do that around three times a week. And then it's just, I mean, some days are... It flows, and some days I, yeah, I don't know. I wrote like I've I've written. I wrote a, a whole song. It's it's totally finished. It's a totally finished song. Not that long ago, and I wrote it, and at first I liked it, and then I was like, I just don't think this is. Yeah, <laughs> quite, that happens to me all the time. This isn't quite right. This isn't quite how I wanted it to be. And then I'll back burner it, and then maybe I'll come back to it later and mm-hmm. totally change it. I mean, I have a song that it's not released, but. I play it live when I play places yeah. and it's called better days. And I wrote three different versions of that song. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's, we finally landed on the third one or maybe mm. it was the second one. I can't remember. Is it, <laughs> did it evolve? And then when it hit the right, you're like, Ooh, I think this is right. Yes. Like it just kind of felt right. Yes. Or something. And I actually had taken it to, so I also go to, um, songwriter groups when I can, you That's can go cool. to yeah. little meetups with other songwriters and, bring a song and play it and people can offer constructive criticism. Do you just connect with people like on Facebook groups or something or? I just Googled. Songwriting (laughs) groups. Found like found some songwriter groups in the Houston area and um, found when they meet and just showed up. Yeah. So, um, but I took better days in one time and I actually left in tears. (laughs) 
because they <laughs> tore it apart? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about failure for a second because you are in the same category that most people are where you have responsibilities. You said this is not your full-time thing. We have these, you know, we're shooting towards something that's our goal, our, you know, our creative passion. But like along the way, like people say, I don't like it. Or they say like, yeah. that doesn't sound good. Or I'll share a mix with my wife and she'll be like, this sounds terrible. Yeah. It's like, how do you deal with, are you getting better at dealing with failure? And I say failure yeah. loosely because I really don't believe it's failure, but. Yeah. You know, I got home that particular time. I got home and, you know, cried to my husband. And <laughs> uh, I think you just have to realize too that not everyone is going to like everything and that's fine. Mm -hmm, it just mm -hmm, doesn't mm -hmm. matter. And really you need to do what you like and really I, what I'm, I can handle criticism pretty well and I really genuinely just want to improve. And so I, I like receiving constructive criticism, but I think in this particular case, I was really attached. I thought I just had a really great idea for a song and then this guy was like, well, that's just a cliche. Mm. And just kind of tore apart, tore apart my whole just general idea for the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and it was something that I was really excited about. And I think that was what <laughs> just really like hurt my feelings, I guess. But um, Was that the last version of it or did after that it got tweaked? No, after that. And so honestly, that's the thing is mm. it really ended up being that's a good thing because I went home and after I was done crying about it I was just really mad and just kind of you know like how dare you yeah <laughs> I'll show you I'm gonna make this so good yeah so I I think I wrote the other two versions just in the same day and then I think I sent all three of them to uh Marcus I, I bounce a lot of things off of Marcus mm -hmm. um because I think he has a good ear um, and he told me which one he liked best. And in That's that particular case, Marcus yeah. also told me, I'm sorry, unless he's written a bunch of number one hit songs, yeah, 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 yeah. it doesn't matter what that guy said. Yeah. So, uh, so the ultimate hear, goal but. of, uh, and I was talking about this with someone I had a session with last week. It was like, he was saying like, oh, I need to do that better. And I was like, dude, this sounds amazing. Like to me. So it's like, only you know yourself. Yeah, I and saw you post something about that. At the end of the that. day, it's like, <laughs> You got to just love it yourself, right? Like, mm -hmm. doesn't matter what other people think, but if you think it's awesome. Exactly. It's awesome. And I think it's so hard, too, to not compare yourself to other people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, the, yeah. like, there's already a Casey Musgraves out there. We don't need another Casey Musgraves. Right. There's already a Miranda Lambert. There's, right. you know, there's already right. all these people out there. And well, it's hard, to too, to, like, I mean, that also, you have to put in the work to figure out who you are yeah. as an artist, too, because... Not only your writing style, but your your sound, the way mm -hmm. your voice sounds, like the way that you produce things, like it's all it's all work to figure out, you know, as you're being inspired by the music that you listen to, it's influencing you. So yeah. you're kind of like maybe sounding at times like this or whatever, but like that's also work because you got to figure out who you are mm -hmm. and why would people want to listen to you as opposed to a Taylor Swift, you know, and that kind of stuff. One of the things that I get into is the fact that like being an artist is um, nowadays everyone if you're an artist needs to consider the fact that you are also a business as a business for you as a songwriter and as an artist because you do both but like what are what are your goals like what what would be a success for you looking forward to the rest of 2020 what would be success in 2020 yeah like what what would be like you look back and be like and I'm really happy with this, this would be like more of a short term. Okay. Short term. Long term. Success. <laughs> would the success be, hey, I want to be a full time artist and make you a know, living doing that? I've really tried because this is something I've wanted for so long. And it really was like such a big dream. I mean, it's so cheesy, but I would go to like concerts of women that I really loved and like I, I like I, I cry at them. <laughs> I mean, like I just just because it's so inspiring. Want, yes, because I'm so inspiring because I mm. want that so bad. Mm -hmm. um, so I've really tried, like, as I'm taking off into it and really embarking and trying and putting myself out there. I've really tried to not put too much mental pressure on it. Um, I mean, long term, if all that ever happens is I play in some bars around Texas and I have a small following of people that really like my music, mm -hmm. that's awesome. 
I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, that's great. If that's all that happens with it, that's great. And I'll be happy with that because I just genuinely enjoy it. And I genuinely love doing it. And I, of course, you know, I set my goals right now. I'm working on writing for an album. Um, I wanted to be impatient and do an EP instead. And <laughs> my husband was like, no, if you're going to do it, you, do you need thing. to just do, you need to like go for it and you need to do an album. Let me pause right there and ask you like, what's the strategy behind that? Because a lot of people are doing the opposite where like, let's just release more consistently, like a single yeah. here, next three months, a single. And I heard people talk about like, unless you're a bigger artist where people are expecting a full yeah. record from you. Like what, what was your, what is your main you know, I don't think we had a strategy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a work in progress. It's I guess. a work in progress, man. We're figuring it out as yeah, we go. And cool. I mean, I think mostly his thing was he just didn't really want me to do like, oh, five songs. I think, you know, he wanted me well, to. Well, if you have more in you, I guess. And if you yeah. put something else, if you put that full, here's a full 10 songs that I wrote that are all awesome or whatever. Yeah. Like, I mean, people may be like, this girl, like, Where'd she come from? Like, she's got awesome yeah. songs. Yeah. Maybe I'm a just, good stepping stone. And you I don't know, know, maybe we change, maybe I change my mind before I get to album point. Who knows? Yeah. I'm just, just trying to wing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and take well, advice from people as I get it. Yeah. And... Well, and that's another reason why this podcast exists, because I want to connect with people that are at different stages yeah. of their career and be like, hey, how could you encourage this person? Because there are people like yourself that have actually never put out music. I work with yeah. a ton of people who this is like their first song that they'll ever put out. So mm-hmm. like you are a step ahead of those people and there are people that are a step ahead of you. So it's yeah. like learning, you know, and being open to learning is so important. Mm-hmm. Talk about details of where people can find more about you, your music. Um, you said you were playing live in Galveston coming up, mm-hmm. but talk us through like your schedule, like what's coming up, like where can people find more about you? Well, I have a website, okay. bonnerayroden.com. <laughs> um, and then social media as well. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. And then all my music is, I mean, it's out you know, everywhere. Cool. <laughs> you stream or buy music. Mm-hmm. Um, so all those good places to check check things out i always make event pages on my facebook for any upcoming shows i have and same with my website they're listed on there as well um i do have i have that little private show coming up and then i've got a show in galveston coming up i think it's march 27th where are you playing galveston it's called jamoka bean okay it's a coffee and wine bar okay cool 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 and beer. <laughs> I have a songwriter that I work with who lives in, in Galveston and she uh-huh. plays at a few coffee shops and stuff. So Yeah. It was so I did I played there I think last month and it was really fun. Cool. And there was a bar next door and people actually ended up coming over from the bar. Just they heard you singing yeah. and just like, and they just like came out. over and <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. And like they were literally standing in the doorway, like poking their heads in, like smoking their cigarettes and <laughs> drinking their beer from the bar next door yeah. but, and uh eventually i think some of them came in but it was fun it was a good that's crowd. awesome i think that was probably one of my favorite little shows that i've done but um yeah so i've got that coming up and then i'm playing in martindale texas at martindale river cafe in june june 20th so i don't have too much booked right now but cool honestly that's something that I've kind of found to be kind of difficult. Booking and stuff and yeah, finding getting, places to play. Yeah, and... it really is. Cause hmm. I mean, I've, there's lots of places I've reached out to that. I'm definitely, you know, at the level where I could play these places. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not shooting my shot or anything. Are they turning you down or are they just They're like, not turning well, me down. they just don't respond. Yeah. They just don't respond. <laughs> Persistence. I know. Like... And I'm like, if you think I'm going to stop, emailing you just because you haven't responded to me you are mm-hmm. sorely mistaken totally <laughs> prepare for two what, more what would be your uh your dream performance like locally here in houston if you could play somewhere i would love to play at the heights theater okay. i love that venue hmm. it's so i just like feels intimate and but it's like a bigger venue i don't know i just i love the heights theater it's that's great such a great venue that would be kind of my dream now obviously like later in life it'd be great to you know play at white oak on the outside stage Mm. but 
Realistic White oak goals. is super cool. <laughs> Realistic one, goals. One step at a time. <laughs> Um, okay, people may not know, but I asked you what your favorite snack was, yeah. and you said skinny girl popcorn, <laughs> which we haven't <laughs> eaten at all during this episode, but uh, so you're a big popcorn fan. Yeah. There may not be more to that story, but <laughs> I always think this is kind of an interesting point for people to know about you is like, if they wanted to get you something, just get her popcorn. Just get me some popcorn. Yeah. But it has to be popped popcorn. It's not the same if you buy that, like pre-popped in a bag mm-hmm. kind of thing mm-hmm. it's not the same it's no. not the same um, but it's just a good well I have this skinny girl popcorn <laughs> that you can take home this box of extra stuff you sure you don't want it? no that's <laughs> That I'm not a skinny girl, first of all. So, hey, my to... husband eats it too. And oh. He's not a skinny girl either. Oh. So, <laughs> okay, I didn't see. Okay, I'm gonna keep the box then. There you go. There you go. Actually, um, it's the best. No, so thank you so much for coming by today, talking about songwriting, talking about music. I really enjoy this podcast because I get to meet people like yourself, and um, what I've come away with mostly, and I'm getting that vibe now, is that like. You do what you do because you love it. It's yeah. like that first time that you got up on the stage and performed. It's like there's something in you that just is like, this feels right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think when you combine that passion with a drive and a persistence and a, like, a, I'm going to make this happen kind of mentality, then beautiful things can happen. Mm-hmm. So I can't wait to continue following what's going on with you and just. That's a really, I don't really know how else to close the show, but so thank you for coming by the show today and um, keep it up. Yeah. This is what I always tell people. Keep it up. (laughs) Keep it up, man. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for having me, though. This is fun. Tears run like a river down. My face, honey, I don't want to go. Here, here we stand in the evening light, never easy to say. One day I know you'll take me away One day we'll build a home far away From all the hurting and leaving Missing and wishing we could stay together Cars are running in
bags of packs There's only so much left of that Cause one day I know you'll take me away One day we'll build a home far away Together oh, 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 Forever Together I like almost did the wrong thing so a couple times, but <laughs> you're a professional. <laughs>